everyone to the first video of a video series about running, installing, coding in Python and using TensorFlow for machine learning. So TensorFlow is an open source library that was released by Google a couple of years back for basically for machine learning. It's become increasingly popular and we're going to look at how we set up our development environments and how we can set up these inside a virtual environment and inside a container using Docker. So to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with setting it up in a virtual environment. So the first command we want to type is sudo easy underscore install pip. Now pip is basically arbitrary Python code that's run through sudo as root to the internet to download packages. So the benefit of doing this is, is when we're installing some Python packages, we need to run as root access and to connect directly to the internet to do so. But the danger of doing so is if you download a malicious package, then an attacker or hacker can get straight into your machine as root access through pip. So be very careful. Don't use it every time you're using sudo. Only do it for the specific commands with TensorFlow. OK, great. Next, we're going to say sudo pip install dash dash upgrade. Uh, what is it? Virtual environment. The dash dash upgrade will check for any updates because I've already got it installed. Excellent. Now we've got our virtual environment. Also, oh, sorry, now that we've created. No, let me start that again. Now that we've installed virtual environment, we're going to create our virtual environment. So we start off by saying virtual environment dash dash system dash site dash packages. And then specify the target directory. TensorFlow 1. What it's going to do is it's going to install the Python executable and development tools around Python as well. All packaged inside that folder location, TensorFlow-1. Excellent. So it's all installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say source slash TensorFlow1 bin slash activate. And now we have currently activated our virtual environment, as we can see here in front of the, in front of the user. Now that's pretty cool. We've got our virtual environment running. Now I'm going to install pip again. Inside this virtual environment. Now this is different to what we did before because remember the virtual environment is completely separated from the user directory and machine. Fantastic. Okay, then to finish off, we just say pip install dash dash upgrade TensorFlow. And now our development environment is ready to start programming Python applications around machine learning with TensorFlow. And that's how we do it with virtual environment. So that's fairly easy and quick. Now let's move on to Docker. Let's clear all that off. So Docker is a framework which uses VirtualBox and runs inside VirtualBox, meaning it's it's running inside a virtual machine pretty much. It's not running on your machine. So they are completely separated environments. And every time we're creating containers through Docker, everything's contained in that VirtualBox and every container is separated from each other. So you have complete segregation between environments, meaning your resources is all separated. So you don't get any interference between any other environments. It's, it's, it's really clever. So let's look how at brew, we're going to use homebrew, install docker. This will install docker. It will update homebrew beforehand as I've got it automatically set to update. There we go. So now it's downloading the docker package. Great, it's installed. Then we want to say brew cask install docker. These are two separate packages because cask is basically an extension of of homebrew. It's like a homebrew 2.0 rather. And it's it's got like more efficient way of downloading packages and a few other things. Great, installed. Then we're going to use cask again. And we're going to install docker-toolbox. And docker-toolbox is basically a set of tools for building our virtual boxes through the terminal. You can actually download the desktop application of Docker which makes it much easier, but I like to do it through terminal and I'm going to make you like it as well. 
Okay, great. We've got all our tools ready for Docker and Docker installed. Now we're going to set up our virtual box. We do that by saying Docker machine create dash dash driver virtual box and we give it a name. We're going to call it Docker box. This will take a little bit of time. What's really great about Docker and virtual environment is a lot of this stuff is straight out of the box. It doesn't take much configuration at all. Once you know the correct flow of how you set up this stuff, it's very easy. Okay, give it some time. My computer's burning up now. So what happens when you do screen recording and Docker can Docker containerization at the same time? So what it's doing is waiting for an IP to assign to the virtual box. And there we go, now it's going to provision. And that will be the virtual box created. Now we can give it a moment. Okay. Great. Okay, we're all done. Okay. Now we're just going to check Docker dash machine start Docker dash box. Okay, it's already running, great, and then we're going to say a very important command, eval dollar docker machine. Now this is very important that you do add this command after you start that virtual box. So the environment and then the name of your box, docker box. What that does is that allows us to start running docker commands inside the terminal. So it's very important. Okay, great. We've got our virtual box running. Now if we say Docker, we can actually start using Docker. So let's clear all this off. We're going to start now and get back into setting up TensorFlow with Docker. And we're going to do that by saying Docker run dash IT dash P, specify the host port. Okay, one, no, let's do zero. And then we're going to do eight, 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 zero again. These ports have to be available. So that's the host port first, then colon in the container port and then you're going to specify the tensorflow image which is on the website at tensorflow.org gcr.io slash tensorflow slash tensorflow and run so what it's going to say is I'm not able to find this image inside my virtual box and then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead Go to that gcr.io slash tensorflow slash tensorflow, download all the binaries, and set up a new Docker container, an image. And now this will take a while because the uh, size of the binaries that we're pulling down are fairly large. I think the total size is close. It's just over a gigabyte. Thankfully, I'm on the NBN network, so we're not going to have to wait too long. But let's speed it up so we don't have to wait. Okay, so we're now ready to roll. And what you'll get is a link here that you can kick off in your browser and you can see
Oh wait, we have to get the IP of the virtual box instead of using local host. Okay, so let's do that. All right, uh, so we say docker dash machine IP docker dash box. And we can run it like so. 